How's it going today, everybody? What I wanna show you in this video is a cool little trick that I learned about compositing with one of the Lumion passes. So in the video that I had made about Lumion compositing with all the render passes already, where we went through the normal map, the Z pass, all that stuff, there was actually something with the Z depth pass that I missed. So originally I was thinking of it as really only being used as like a depth of field, kind of like a weird gimmicky Photoshop effect. It's kind of cool, but at the same time, the like Lumion is just better at doing it, so it's something I didn't use. But someone who does a little bit of work for us actually mentioned to me that he uses it as compositing, and he will make it so that it just gives like a fog effect. So I was playing around with it. We're gonna set up a quick video to render out. We're gonna take it in Premiere, and then we are gonna have fog applied inside of Premiere so that it is a non-destructive workflow. You can have your scene with and without fog, so it's, it gives you a very similar effect to the Lumion Fog animation, but without further ado, thanks for checking out the video, and I hope you learned something. Right, so to get started, we're going to make a very simple video. We're just going to go back, so we're going to go over here. I want to have more of the, the lawn showing, I guess. So let's go back something like here. I'll pull this in something like that. And maybe do 30. So let's save it here. Move the camera forward. Here we go. Let's bump this up to like, I don't know, 10 seconds or something. So we hit OK. Let's just throw on realistic. And something I did make a mistake with this before and I have already rendered out the, the clip. I'm just showing you kind of what I did to set it up. But one mistake I feel I did make is that I put on the cloudy day, but I do think for this something like overcast would work because there was a lot of fog and there was too much sun and things didn't really seem like they were meshing. So do overcast nine. I think something like that would look a lot better. And yeah, that's really the only, uh, I think the only real mistake I made with those. So what we can do, is we can just play that out. You know, let's pretend that we are actually gonna be running this out. So we go to render clip, you know, do five stars, whatever you're doing. I like to do five stars, 60 FPS, if you have the computer to do that quickly. And you do actually have to change this to image sequence. Um, the reason being is because we want the depth map. You're gonna turn that on, and then we're gonna go all frames, full HD, and I think I saved this. So yeah, Z depth pass, save everything in here. It's really not too big of a deal where you save it, but you do want to do image sequence for this because um, you can't output clips. Uh, it I understand why Lumion does it, but you can't do clips of these because Lumion is kind of compiling all of the frames together uh, for the normal clip when you get everything in an MP4. So it would have to go one frame normal one frame depth back and forth to use it the normal way so you do just want to use the image sequence image sequence is something that if you don't use it a lot you might want to use it anyways because it is better to have control over it and if something crashes or if there's an issue with it you can just pick it up right from that frame um, but yeah so we did 10 seconds so it was 600 frames in total and you can use whatever video editor you want for this. I'm going to personally use Premiere because that's what I'm used to. But if you have something like um, DaVinci, that's completely fine. You will just kind of have to figure out the steps that I'm doing in Premiere in DaVinci, but it's all pretty simple stuff. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. So now that we are in Premiere, I'm going to go up to import. We're going to click on fog test zero zero, whatever you named it. You just want to click on the first one. The Lumion will automatically name them with the correct convention so that you can import them uh, into other software. Make sure image sequence is clicked. And then from there, we are going to have to change the information here because it's auto it, for me, it's saving as 29.97 for the frame rate but we can go assume this frame rate 60 drop it in and now it's looking closer to what we wanted so we have the color pass in let's go back to import 
and then we're going to scroll down and we are going to find the first depth pass. Again, image sequence is checked on, open. So again, we have that same problem with the frame rate. So let's just click it. We'll go to modify, click on it, right click, modify, interpret footage, just in case anyone is having trouble finding it. And then assume this frame rate 60. And now we can drag this in and they should line up. So the first thing you're going to notice, though, is this doesn't really look like fog because it's getting darker as it goes away, whereas we want it to be whiter the further away it is. So let's go over to effects. It may be in a different location for you, but basically just find your effects tab. You can if you if you're really new to this and you're not sure, just basically start clicking some of these ones up here until you can find it. Um, these are just your different workspaces. So something like color editing like they you know they all have some different stuff in here i find it's a little bit weird i always just use learning because it's just what's there when i open it so go to effects invert and then now we're starting to get more of a fog effect so this is where we can go and click on this actually so from here we just right click on or sorry just click on the opacity make sure this is open blend mode. And for those of you that have used Photoshop before, this is very similar to even what we were doing then, where we're just going to go screen. And now it is kind of layering itself on top of the fog test. So the way that you kind of notice it there is that if we do normal, all the parts that are black are turning into the color pass because it's kind of becoming see through. So screen means it's going to keep the white parts. And yeah, so from here, we do this. Now we have some really thick fog, but it's not quite what we want. So let's try something like 50. And, you know, it's getting there. It's a little bit better, but maybe if we just go like 75. So I kind of liked having that really foggy effect. Again, this isn't perfect, but it is just something that I think if you need to add a little fog to your scene or if someone wants to see something that, you know, maybe you're on like a lake and it's very foggy in the morning, what you can do is just kind of throw on a Z pass or Z depth pass, it doesn't take that much longer to render. And then if someone wants to see that, you just kind of have the tools uh, moving forward. So all you have to do though, if you don't want it, you just click it off, everything goes back to normal. And that's what is really nice about doing these render passes. You do have more control over it. If you're using the Lumion fog effect, you know, it could look good, but you're stuck with that color pass. So if you found the video helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you could give me a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel. Uh, this is, as I said, kind of a weird video, but uh, if this is the first time you came across the channel, we do normally do stuff that I think is a little bit more in depth. This was just kind of a quick little skill builder, I guess, and just a way to round out some of the things that I've been learning with how to do post-production with Lumion uh, using some of the passes. So I think this is the only big one that I missed. So I wanted to go back and make a video for it. I'm going to end the video there though. I hope everyone has a great night and I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy, everybody.